greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Um, if you like these videos, subscribe, like, share, so more people can get built up in the body of Christ. Uh, this is just a part two of what I was doing earlier. I record these on my phone and uh, the video stopped, so I had to, you know, get the second part going. So this is part two of John chapter 10, verse uh, 22 to 42. And I'm just going to basically like conclude the rest of it. And uh, basically summarize with, so these people, they had a completely different understanding of how they looked at the scriptures and how they saw Jesus, right? So for example, a white man and a black man, just to put it simply, I don't really care what you believe about it or whatever it is, um, just is just an example. So don't get all, uh, you know, sensitive or whatever. So a white man and a black man cannot uh, live in peace unless there is some kind of agreement, right? Like the Bible talks about how, how can two walk in the same direction without being in an agreement, right? Like if me and you are walking to the store, granted you can walk or whatever, we're heading to the same location, there is no possible way that we can both end up at the same place without like communication and agreement within that communication, right? And peacefully, like you can't, you can't walk next to me in the same direction without some kind of an agreement that we have one destination or one direction to wherever you might be going to. Because if you're walking in a different direction, you're not in agreement with me. You're going that way. And I don't mean like you're not in agreement like where we're headed. I mean like like looking at the situation, two people cannot walk in the same direction without some form of agreement, right? So keep that in mind. So when Jesus came, right, he, he said, I've, I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword to bring division, right? To actually shaft out the people of God and those who worship God with their lips, right? So just as Joshua, literally verbatim what Joshua was doing, Choose today whom you shall serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, right? So Jesus came to them and was basically like, look, choose whom you will serve. I revealed to you the truth. I told you who I am. You don't believe me who I am. I even told you that you wouldn't believe me who I am. And what are you doing? Not believing me on who I am, right? So, so these things happen. And then now Jesus has brought division and revealed to them their actual position and their actual uh, 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 heart towards God and their and their righteousness in the sight of God. Right. And he laid it out in, in different parables and, and all that uh, analogies and things like that and questions and how he went about life. So now we see that Jesus is is doing these things. And then it comes down to basically how, like, hold on one second. So it comes down to these people were not looking at the scriptures in the same way we do, right? Right. One, because they're the ones that got revealed the scriptures, the living God in the first place. Two, they're the ones that held the, the living scriptures by God was entrusted in their hands, right? So this wasn't like, like nowadays, like a debate to win an argument, right? Like this wasn't um, like, oh, I'm right. And you finally see why I'm right. It wasn't like that. This was life or death. This was eternal life or eternal death. They know the living God. And now this man that comes from Nazareth that claims to be the son of God, the Messiah, the chosen anointed one of God, the begotten of the father comes and says, I am he that created you and everything that we're in. Right. Not necessarily through his words all the time, but through his actions. Right. He says these things. He says, if you don't believe because of what I've said, look at the what I've done. That testifies to me and at least believe on that account, right? So listen, so these people clearly knew. It's like if you, if you, uh, 
It's like, okay, so since I like talking about finances, let's say you told somebody, oh, I have like $5 million, right? But last year, they're like broke or whatever, homeless, right? And then like one year later, 365 years later, 365 days later, the the people that the that this person shows it to, like, hey, I have $5 million, they're like, oh, no, I don't believe it. So then, you know, you start looking at their lifestyle, it changed, right? High quality clothes, high quality food, high like better management of whatever it is, face, body, odor, all that stuff, right? Clothes. They they move into a, a much bigger house, a paid for house. They were homeless. And, and and then you see all these things lining up, right? Like, well, okay. So last year they were homeless. Now they're dressing way better. They're they're getting haircuts regularly or they're they're maintaining, you know, something, right? They're maintaining their hygiene way better. Their clothes are much better washed and, and it's it's different clothes, right? Oh, now they actually have a car oh now they have a fancier car oh like you know they're they're going out to places oh they're traveling a lot oh they're doing this and these are things that they're visibly able to see and verify right so let's say that jesus says i am the messiah i'm the chosen one i am i am the promised one that was supposed to come that moses spoke about to the pharisees right just to connect the stories, let's say now Jesus starts healing the sick and doing all these things, right? That's just like the homeless person. Now they're in the better cars, better clothes. They're in a house house, right? And there are all these things that they can verify with their eyes. These are people that know the poor man. These are people that know Jesus, right? The Pharisees can see Jesus. They can have a meal. Listen, they can have a meal with Jesus, right? They can sit down and talk to him. They, they, they can shake his hand. They can hug him, whatever, right? And these people, these people are openly denying what they're seeing. Now, obviously, I'm putting it in a earthly standpoint like that, you know, like raising the dead is not the same as buying a house, right? But it's just, it's just the idea. Just follow the idea of what I'm trying to say, right? These people verified, okay, they're going on a lot more travels. They're they're dressing nice. They're doing this, this, this. They got a house. They got a car. They got, oh, dang, they just pulled up in another car yesterday, right? And and these are things that they can verify through their sight, right? And then they, they, they might doubt, oh, well, then they'll make up excuses. Oh, well, you know, maybe they're just kind of doing it for now. Maybe they came up for a little bit. Right? Oh, well, you know, maybe, you know, they they're just faking it. Right. Oh, well, maybe they're just lucky or whatever. Right. Like, I don't believe in luck, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like in the, in the, in the world's standards. Oh, maybe they just struck gold or something. Right. For like now they're going to be dressing all nice and stuff. Maybe they're just rich looking, but really inside they're poor and they're in debt or whatever else. So it leads up to that point. Person pulls up, let's say, in a nice Tesla or a nice whatever. Right. Oh, so, yeah, like I said, I have like five million dollars now. Right. And and. All along, these people are not believing it. They're not believing it. They're not believing it, right? Then it comes to the point where the person will show them their bank account, right? Just to finally prove, look, you don't believe me that I have $5 million? Okay, come here. Let me, and, and okay, the, at first, they send them a, a screenshot, right? A screenshot of the bank account. You know, like, you know, five comma you know, like one, two, three, four, whatever, zero, zeros, right? And then these people, ah, no, that, that, no, I, I don't really believe that. So now let's use that snapshot, the, the screenshot, as the death of Jesus, and then the disciples seeing Jesus rise, right? That's like the, the, the screenshot that the, that the Pharisees don't believe, right? Because Jesus is like, I'm the son of God. I'm going to die and rise this, you know, raise this temple up in three days if you kill me. They're like, oh, this took 47 years, whatever, to build. Like, no, you can't do this in three days. He was talking about his body, right? So now the proof shows when they see the actual bank account, right? W would be when you go up to them, you log in on your phone and you say, all right, I'm tired of you doubting me. Look. Right here, this is my numbers, right here. You can you can see this, right? I'm logging in right now in front of you, right? And then they log in on their bank account and they show them the five whatever point, whatever million dollars, right? Now, in Jesus' terms, that would be him rising again, 
right? The disciples seeing it as a screenshot. And then later on, when the disciples gain the Holy, get the Holy Spirit, then they, then they go about and then they do the things that Jesus said that they would do. Listen, okay? Listen. Now that is a verification, right? Right in front of your eyes. Now it's not just Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, this guy that was 30 some years old and we know your parents. You don't even have gray hairs. No, it's not that anymore. Now Jesus of Nazareth is risen, accepted into heaven and sends the Holy Spirit by the Father's name, right? So listen. So by the Father's name, now these disciples have the Holy Spirit. Now that's a clear check mark. Okay, let's go. There is no way that you can deny those things except it is a spiritual blindness. Okay? It's a spiritual blindness that these people are now de openly denying. Okay? And then even Peter, James, all, all the people. Oh, Oh, you did this on your own accord. No, I'm going to tell you until the breath leaves my lungs that I did this by the name of Jesus. I have to lean back for this. Whom you crucified, right? Whom you crucified. <laughs> Who you traded a criminal that actually committed an, uh, an act that is decent, an, that is uh, worthy of crucifixion and you traded it for an innocent man. Check the, the sermon in Acts, right? I'm just summarizing, right? Whom you crucified. got to do it again. Whom you crucified, right? That's how I do these things. So, so it's just like that. Now, these Jews, the Pharisees knew exactly, listen, they knew exactly what he was saying. They knew exactly who he was claiming to be. That's why they got angry enough, listen, to kill him, literally picking up stones. I would imagine it's almost like right after it clicked, they're just like, it's like, oh, well, I give eternal life to them to my sheep you aren't my sheep but they won't ever get plucked out of my hands because they're in my father's hands and my father and i are one the moment listen listen clean out that earwax that spiritual earwax the moment they actually understood because they have an understanding of the living god the moment they understood they picked up stones to stone him if you actually understand how crazy that is, at what level, they, they weren't talking normal talk, they're talking spiritual, eternal talk. That's why it's baffling. Like people don't understand, Jesus claimed to be God over and over and over and over. He said, if you don't believe based on my word, believe at least at least on the works no one has ever done these things in one being all in one you know in the, such a short amount of time too listen these things were these were like earth shattering things okay okay these are earth shattering things and 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 the proof showed right after after he died, the veil ripped perfectly. Research. The veil was not just some kind of like, you know, curtain that you put on the thing. This was a thick veil. Like it was heavy. I think they, they said it was like, it's like four inches thick. Right? It's huge. It's tall because it covers, it's in, it's in the, the temple. These temples are not small, you know. Churches nowadays, you know, they might be the size of like, um, like two or three stories maybe, right? Like, we're talking like a temple that took 40-something years to build back then, right? And and they took their time. The, these, weren't, these weren't little buildings, right? These aren't buildings you can put up in six months. Like, you can put up, you can build a house if you have the right crew and the right knowledge and all that stuff. Literally within like, like a couple months. Like, you, you can build a house in a couple months. Like, literally, listen, right? In a couple months, you can build a whole house. Done, ready, go. You can live in that thing. You go flush your toilet tonight, right? These things took 40, these took a long time to make, right? So the veil was huge, heavy, okay? And that thing split 
perfectly in half at the death of Jesus. Listen, the whole earth shook. The sky, the stars lost their shine. Listen, okay? These are some of the receipts that Jesus had to leave, right? And that he left due to his death in order that these people might believe, right? Then the, then the snapshot was the disciples knowing. Then the actual bank account you showing, all right, then here's my receipt, was him rising again, giving them the Holy Spirit and then going out and doing the things that he did. So listen, Jesus over and over and over over again because people knew what to expect from the messiah right the messiah is here to save his people but they just had a skewed thought of what the saving might be right like oh he's going to save us from the romans because we're being persecuted and we're being oppressed he's like no that's what you guys thought i came to save your soul your spirit from an eternal damnation that you do not even know completely to the full extent yet right so Jesus came that he might save people eternally. They're thinking, oh, well, you know, we've been oppressed for many years, you know, this, this, and this. No, he wasn't, because you being eternally saved in that time, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Listen, in a time of persecution, how on earth, listen, if you, if you were sticking to an idea that, that had, that it, families like people were dying like flies listen people were dying like flies that they should not that they should not die but they actually sit there and get burned to death get their tongues cut off get their body parts chopped off and all these things these things happened listen these things happen to christians but because of the holy spirit inside of them not christ that lives in them or not them that lives in them but christ that lives in them the joy of the lord is strength wherever the spirit of god is there is liberty wherever god's spirit it is there Jesus is wherever Jesus is his yoke is oh my good good Lord Jesus look listen wherever Jesus is there shall be peace and rest even in the middle of a turmoil right Jesus woke up from a storm these disciples oh, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. and then these people listen the disciples oh Jesus oh my gosh we're gonna die he's like what, what are you guys talking about bro like Oh, ye of little faith, right? They lack confidence in what God is able to do for them. Listen, so they lack confidence that God can protect them or keep them alive during that storm. What? Listen, the God that created this universe and things that we don't even see, know, and understand, we don't even understand the full extent of our own human body that we use day in and day out i'm talking scientists have dedicated their entire lives their entire careers 30 40 50 60 years studying just one part of the body and they can't it's been years and they they only they, they're at the they can't even unlock it completely listen we're talking about the God that created the thing that you can't even figure out. And it's been hundreds of years of research compiling hundreds of years of people, hundreds of people dedicating thousands of hundreds of thousands of hours of research and millions and billions of dollars in order to fund their research. Can't even figure out what the heck one party, one body part is fully capable of doing. Listen, the God that created that. All right, the God that created that, the God that created the very things that we cannot fully understand and we've spent d millennia trying to understand. You can you don't even you don't even believe that he can that he that that he the the disciples didn't believe that that God could keep them safe in that storm, right? The lack of confidence in what God is able to do. Okay? So listen, so Jesus knew very clearly who he was. He demonstrated it more than just his words. You don't need words completely to understand what somebody is saying. Their actions, right? Your, the, the product of your life right now is just uh, the series of actions and choices that you've made in the last five to 10 years, depending on how old you are, right? 
last 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it might be, two or three years, it doesn't matter, right? It's just an accumulation of all your choices that, and, and that's where you are now, literally, right? Sometimes it's out of your reach, but your response to the, to the thing that happened to you is within your reach, right? So ultimately, things that happen to you in your control or out of your control, how you respond is your choice and that will guide where your path shall lead you to, right? So listen, so Jesus was in full capability of telling everyone straight up, look, listen, I am the son of God. I'm going to save all you guys. But he was coming for a different, see, he had to go about it in a way because he knows what he created. He knows humans. He knows us, right? He knows the state that we're in right now, the sinful state that we're in, the deathly state, destruction, greed, envy, hate, uh, malice, uh, ill will, everything, right? Evil intent, everything is just messed up about us. It's, it's, it's like a virus that has infiltrated a computer. The, you you go to a website that you normally do and then like 50 other random websites pop up, right? Or like you go to an application that you normally use on your computer and it just, and then it freezes your computer, right? Like, what? This, that's what happened to the human, right? We're not supposed to die and do all these things and hate and kill and do whatever else, right? No, we're not supposed to. So Jesus didn't go about it in the way that humans thought. Why would you not go about it in the way humans thought? Well, they're messed up. Why would you? See, our eyes got skewed, right? We turned from God to ourselves, to ourselves, to Satan's thoughts and and his and his and his uh and his ways about thinking of things, right? Selfishness and stuff like that, pride, right? And all these things, they're now fueling, and and that's the filter we see things through. That's why when the disciples came, oh Jesus is here, he's gonna save us from the Roman soldiers. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, God is clean, he remained pure. He will always be pure. So when he came to an, a defiled person, defiled creation, he had to go about it in a different way, right? So if he just straight up told you guys, us, oh, I'm God, you know, this, this, and this, which he did by his actions, right? And other, and other things, other words and, and all that stuff, right? It wouldn't have been good for us to hear it plainly. Why? Because we have a different evil filter. You need to catch that. We have an evil filter. So if a pure God comes to people that see things through an evil lens, even if he told us the most gracious truth, we're, we have an evil filter. What? That doesn't that, that, that make any sense. Listen. Listen. How? How? Oh, my goodness, bro. Hold on, man. Look, Listen. How on earth? Okay. Take that, take that filter example as this. Somebody comes and brings you clean water. And you're like, oh, thanks for the clean water. I'm going to put it through my dirty filter, then drink it. That's basically what we did to God, right? God comes pure and holy in his ways, never sinning ever on earth. He never sinned. He's God, right? And then we, and then he comes and says, I've come to set captivity captive. I've come to, 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 to heal the sick, free the, the, the leper, and all these things, right? And we're like, oh, that's great, God. Here, come over here. I'm going to put whatever you said, your pureness, through this dirty filter. And then we can go about it. Okay, so, boss, you're going to take over and you're going to be the new, the new ruler, right? Like you're going to overthrow Caesar, right? Yeah, that's what you can to do. No, look, we have an evil filter, right? That's why when the Jews understood and understanding got added into their evil filter because they were evil filtering through their evil filter, they picked up stones to stone him. What? Why are you stoning the very being that is going to save you from your from your own filth? What? It doesn't make any sense. Listen. All in all, the Jews 
the Pharisees, the people of the scripture, the scribes, the Sadducees, they had a very, very clear understanding on who Jesus was claiming to be. And because they knew who he was claiming to be, they wanted to kill him because he's a man. In their evil filter sight, he's a man, right? He's, oh, you're a man. Why are you saying you're God, right? If, if, if I can summarize this entire... This little piece of it, and in many parts of the Bible where Jesus, they know who he, they know who he is claiming to be, and they know who he is, they're just denying it, right? So, like, basically, Jesus comes on the scene, and he, like, his whole life is, is just pointing to him being the Messiah. How on earth are, are people who study the scriptures that are led of an angel to go to Jesus as a baby. We have come to worship the king, the promised one. And listen, did anyone, anyone, listen, I don't care what history says. I did. You want me to believe what a man wrote about history or what God's eternal word that came before there was even a man to, to think? Right? You want me to believe, oh, well, historically speaking, blah, 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 blah. sit down, bro. Before there was even a thing as history, God's word was still here. So you want me to believe what some man with an evil filter happened to write down and say, I'd rather trust that rather than the Bible. I'm going to tell you biblically, because God is outside of space and time, right? Biblically, Jesus' life is like no other life that has ever existed outside of adam because he was the first human right outside of adam jesus is the is the, like literally like a miracle literally right like before he could even speak things were happening to for him angels were sent before he was even a thought of a thought he was alive right before abraham i am before that he look listen jesus was there in the garden, right? When these things happen, he had to go into the earth to say it to set it right. So these things happen. Like just 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 go do your research because it's it's gonna be a lot longer video if I actually explain this, some of these. So basically, Jesus' life, the things that happened, how it happened, when he came, why he came, were all very apparent and clear. He was spoken about hundreds of years before he even came, and then when he actually did come. People came to see him, right? And then people understood, oh, it's the time of the Messiah to be here on earth. Let me go and and try to stop it. It's scripture, eternal. You're not going to stop God. So when the Pharisees, when the Pharisees, listen, when the Pharisees finally could not by any means stop Jesus they had to do something right that okay we can't really stop this guy what the heck you know so they would test him right they would test him to try to get something out of him so they would have a point to prove so they can kill him right they're trying to get him out to break the law they obviously escaped because Jesus is the word of God in the flesh so you're saying he doesn't understand himself Pharisees sit down all right so that, that that's really it that that's really it right there like summarizing this was a very 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 crucial like life or death eternal life or eternal death matter for these Pharisees and Jesus knew who he was and he knew who he was claiming to be and he was showing it through his actions and the Pharisees didn't want to accept it because of their spiritual blindness and spiritual hardening of hearts so Jesus claimed to be God by his life, by his words, and by and by what followed after. The proof is there. Are you going to believe him or are you going to be as a Pharisee? That Jesus told them, like, judgment is going to be harsher on you guys than, than Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. The sky opened up, rained fire, killed an entire twin city. 
But because the Pharisees were able to see Jesus doing these things and they still yet did not believe, that's worse. Why? The judgment of God happens first in the house of God. Why? Because you guys know the truth first. And because you were exposed to the truth first, you're going to have a, a harsher punishment if you close your eyes and blind your heart on purpose. Right? So listen, folks. It's not rocket science. It's just truth. That's it. It's just truth. So you, by no means... Just as Paul said, have any excuse. The times of ignorance have been overlooked. Now you can clearly see and taste that the Lord is good. You can clearly see, listen, and taste that the Lord is good. But due to your spiritual blindness or your spiritual unwilling, your spiritual pride to be willing to accept the truth or more of the truth if you're in it or or even to to be open to the truth. And I don't mean like, oh, open your heart and you know, no, 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 no. That's like a worldly way of saying like, oh, open your heart and let anything in. No, I don't care about you opening your heart. Your heart is wicked and deceitful amongst all above all things who can understand it the bible says right so why why am i telling you to open up an evil place doesn't make any sense right repent and believe jesus says do if you love me keep my commandments what is that if you love me actions right so your action repenting is an action isn't that something you feel it's an action feeding your child is an action of love for you love them enough to keep them alive by adding sustenance to their body. It's not just a feeling. The actions produce some feelings sometimes. Like, oh, you look at your kid. Oh, I love my kid. Oh, I love my mom. Or I love my dad. Or I love my boyfriend. Or I love my girlfriend. Or I love my niece or nephew or whatever. Whatever. whatever whoever. I'm a coworker. Professor. I don't care who it is. Listen. Actions shall shall dictate the love you have for the other person okay oh i beat them every day because i love them that doesn't make any sense that's borderline abuse oh well you know i tell them to shut up because you know they just need to know when it's right what oh i just be bluntly honest what listen listen there's a fine line between like emotional mental physical or verbal abuse and like loving someone and correcting someone in love and kindness, right? There's a fine line, right? So when God, and notice that Jesus, he didn't deny anyone that came to him. John chapter three, a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus. Listen, a name of Nicodemus, he came to him. He's, he contemplated secretly in his heart. <sighs> well, and God moved him. He said, I know that you are from God. Be why? Because what you're doing, you know, raising the dead and all the, all the miracles and stuff, could not be done lest God be with you. The Pharisees knew the same thing. They just denied it. They, they hardened their hearts and closed their eyes, Right? But Nicodemus was like, wait, no. He, he had true wisdom and understanding because he knew. Okay. No man can do all these good things without God being with them. And, and they're not just normal things like, oh, you know, like, I'm going to, like, help somebody have a place to stay. Or I'm going to, you know, give somebody a ride. Or I'm going to, you know, lend some money. Or I'm, I'm going to feed this person. No, 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 no. He's talking, like, miracles, right? The multiplying food. That, whew, to, off of a few pieces of thi like one person could have eaten that maybe for a few hours they'll be good maybe but how do you feed 10 to 15,000 people right that that, that 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 scientifically speaking we need machines we need we need to water something down we need gmos we need all these things that will produce the food at that but instantaneously 
No, 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 no. You can't have that without God. You cannot, right? You cannot, right? And then all the good things, raising the people from the dead. Listen, oh my goodness, Lord Jesus, help me. Look, raising people from the dead, you don't do that without God being, without God Almighty being with you. Listen, without God Almighty being with you, you can't, he couldn't have done these things. He couldn't have, right? So now, Nicodemus, he didn't deny Nicodemus. Who, what, what, what was Nicodemus? He was a Pharisee. Listen, he was a Pharisee. A, fa a, fa a, a Pharisee. The same Pharisees that are picking up stones to stone our Lord before it was his time. He didn't deny anyone that came to him. People say, oh, it's, it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven. Y yeah, because there's other reasons why, right? The young rich ruler, pay attention to his story. And I'm getting to a point. Pay attention to his story. He was rich and kept the, the law but it wasn't even it had nothing to do with his riches why he wasn't able to basically be made perfect right in like jesus standards it was notice what he said after he said sell all your possessions and then follow me listen he said sell all your possessions and then follow me because he was attached to some of that stuff in his heart, right? He said he, he walked away. What? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living God, is before this young rich ruler's eyes. Jesus tells him what he can do to, to gain eternal life and be made perfect. He wasn't willing to do that. Pay attention. Jesus will accept anyone. I'll give you an example. They asked Jesus, how many times should we forgive our brother? Should we forgive them just seven times? He said, no, 70 times seven. In other words, forgive them as long as they're actually repenting. What is what, what am I saying here? Jesus will accept you just as he said. I will by no means reject anyone that comes to me. If you genuinely are turning from your ways, repenting and believing, do you think Jesus will will deny you? He follows his word. He's not going he's, he's not going to do all that, right? So listen. Right? So Jesus is Lord. He's good. He's God. In Jesus name, listen.